During the late 1800s, Irish Catholics immigrated to the rich shores of the eastern coast of America. In search of a better life, they found work in the coal mines of Pennsylvania. The people were literally starving to death in, in Ireland. The Irish people basically lived on the potato. And I, the Irish people were basically farmers, and that was their food supply. The Irish Catholics were a hated group of people. There is no special reason for this hatred, except that it started hundreds of years earlier in England. When the English came to America, they carried with them this hatred. It did not take long for the Irish to figure out that they were not welcomed. They also found out that mining was a rigorous and dangerous job. Their long, grueling hours in the damp, dark mines hardly provided them with a decent day's pay. It wasn't so much a choice of working in the mines. When they landed in places like New York, the uh, men who owned the coal company looking for cheap labor uh, would just literally grab them and say, work in the coal fields of Pennsylvania. And they put, literally put them on buckboards that would transport them up here. And they, that's, that's basically how they settled in the area. Miners lived in homes owned by the coal company. Within their community was a company store where a miner was forced to buy all his food, clothes, and mining supplies, all at a hefty price. The cost of the items were taken directly out of his pay, leaving the miner with little wages, no wages, and sometimes owing the company money instead. A tactic used by coal companies so that miners were constantly indebted to them making it difficult for them to leave. Treated like slaves, this is where our conflict begins. When you see how they were indentured slaves, basically because they were always owed something to the company store, when you see that they could only buy things from the company store. If you go back and look at labor in those days and management, there was a need for the union at that time. There was no regard for the working man at all, like any of the men who owned any of the businesses. The Ancient Order of Hibernians, otherwise known as the AOH, was an Irish Catholic fraternal organization. Within the AOH was a secret organization known as the Molly Maguires. The name, the popular story of Molly Maguire supposedly came from a woman who resented the fact that she had to pay rent on her own farm. By that I mean England would reward someone who, say, fought in a war with France, would turn around and say, well, here, we're going to give you so much money, say, in, in county court, there's so much ground out there, that this is going to be your estate. And the farmers and the people who actually owned it just had it stolen from them. And then not only was the ground stolen from them, then they had to pay rent to the landlord. He lived in England, of course, Wales. Never, never even set foot in Ireland, but he had somebody collect rents for him. So Mrs. McGuire, the Molly McGuire, supposedly uh, uh, had men dress up as women. When the rent collector would come around, they would chase them off. Some were beaten, eventually some were shot. And they got to be known as an organization to be recognized with as, as, as a terrorist organization. So when the problems came in the coal fields of Pennsylvania, they put the name Molly McGuire's on it because anybody who came from England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales, had an idea who the Molly Maguires were and had an organization to be feared. The Molly Maguires were a terrorist force active from the 1860s to the 1870s. Their role as a labor force is disputable, depending entirely on perception. The conception of the Mollies started long before child labor laws, minimum wage, suitable standards for working conditions, or any form of an organized union. There were about 20 of them. One main leader was uh, John Kehoe. Believed to be led by John Kehoe, the Molly Maguires lacked focused and organized goals for the working class. Instead, they used terrorist tactics such as beating, bashing, and even murder to be heard. They instilled fear on the company owners, police, and supervisors. Franklin B. Gallen, a selfish, ruthless coal baron, was the owner of the Reading Railroad. He was no stranger to the violence of the Mollies. 
Motivated by greed to control the manufacture and production of coal, Gallen hired James McParlin through the Alan Pinkerton Detective Agency to collect evidence and weed out the Molly Maguires. Alan Pinkerton, who was head of the agency, he was hired by the coal mine owners to send in detectives to weed out the leaders. And it took a detective exactly two and a half years to accomplish that task. The leaders were weeded out. There were 20 of them. And they were accused of murder. They were tried, convicted, and hanged. James McParlin, alias James McKenna, gained respect and trust among the Molly Maguires and joined the organization. Within five years, McParlin gathered evidence and testifying on the stand, undermined one of the tightest terrorist organizations ever to set foot in America. Ten men were hanged. In Pennsylvania, it's known as the Day of the Rope. Four were hanged at the Jim Thorpe Jail, and six were hanged at Pottsville. After a grossly unfair trial at the Ma Chung County Jail in Pennsylvania on June 21st, 1877, four Molly McGuire's were hanged. Three others were later hanged at the jail as well. On his way to the gallows, Alexander Campbell declared his innocence. He slapped his hand against the wall in cell 17 and said, There is proof of my words. That work of mine will never be wiped out. It will remain forever to shame the county for hanging an innocent man. The legendary handprint of Alec Campbell still remains in cell number 17. It's reported that as they were taking him out and he put his handprint on the wall that he said, I'm innocent. My handprint will remain here to show that I'm innocent and the handprint will stay here on the wall. But Thomas Fisher also is reported to have said as he was being hanged, a um, hundred years from now, people will return to this area to show where this injustice was done. And a hundred years from the time he was hanged, people were coming here to see the handprint on the wall. Six Molly Maguires were hanged at the Pottsville County Jail on June 21st, 1877, the same day of the hangings that took place in Jim Thorpe. Were these men really guilty, or were they in fact innocent? The Mollies were controversial. Some people look at them as heroes, some people look at them as vigilantes. It all depends on who writes the book and your own personal opinion. After the hangings of the Molly Maguires, it took more than 13 years, and to the dismay of the coal barons, including Franklin Gowan, who committed suicide, the unions would finally prevail. They gained the strength and support so desperately needed, and in doing so, would join to create the United Mine Workers in 1890 the most powerful labor force seen to date.